A ball is kicked with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. We have to find a time of flight range, that is how far will the ball go before hitting the ground, and what will be the maximum height of the ball. So always in these kind of problems, I always recommend people to just draw the diagram first. So the diagram would look something like this. You have x axis here, and then y axis here and then initial velocity something like this v naught it makes an angle theta and just let's just list down the knowns here so knowns is definitely v naught that is 10 meters per second it is always a good idea to write the units too um, the angle given to us is 45 degrees okay and that's it but from just this information, I can also figure out the x and y components because that's something uh, you can always do if you have got given initial velocity and angle. And we also want to do that because a projectile motion, again, is a combination of two one-dimensional motion, one in x and then one in y. So you have to break down this two-dimensional problem into x and y, and that includes writing down the initial velocity in the x and y direction. So initial velocity, again, here will be v naught cosine theta and then let's call that v naught x and it's going to be v naught y and that will be v naught sine of theta so you can also list down that v x is v naught cosine of theta or 10 cosine 45 and v y is 10 sine of 45 degrees Okay, now I'm going to copy the equations from the last video. So you've got these equations, right? Um, a quick recap, these are just the equations in x and y where the subscripts y, x and y are basically denoting which, which dimension equation is this. So we have got the three major equations and those three major equations in x and y, they look like this. Now we say that acceleration in y is minus g, acceleration in x is zero. So those three equations in the x they become these and then these equations in the y they become this so now we have we have to work out this problem using these equations so i'm just going to copy these always remember this is the holy grail if you know these equations if you know what, what these equations mean you can always work out any kind of projectile motion problem so let's write these in a very compact form right here let me put them in a box all right so let's calculate the first thing, that is time of flight. Okay, so so a ball will start from here, right, and it's gonna go in a parabolic trajectory and it's gonna land somewhere like that. Okay, now what we are looking for is the total time it takes for this ball to get launched and hit back the ground again okay so this is the time we, are, we, we want if you start looking at the time you start a stopwatch from here and it keeps running and then you stop the stopwatch here the time that just your stopwatch will show that is the time of flight now this this motion in this two-dimensional motion can be thought of a uh, the two motions first in y direction where this ball is traveling in the y direction with the velo initial velocity v naught sine theta and that goes up and then com comes down right goes up and then comes down so this is what i'm saying just so that, so that we can uh, make this thing clear in our minds this is v naught sine theta right so the time required, this is what I'm saying, the time required for this ball to do this is same as uh, time required for this ball to go up and then come down, but with initial velocity v naught sine theta in the y direction. Okay, I'm just going to repeat it one more time. The, in the, here you've got v naught, right? So the time required for this ball to do this trajectory is same as for this ball 
to go up and then come down in the y direction all right so to figure time of flight time of flight we know is like initially it's a tra it's 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 although the realistically it's going in two dimension and it's traveling in x and y both but the time required to get to uh, the, to get back to the ground is same as for it to go to the highest point in the y direction and come back down so let's calculate that time that the ball will ball will take to get to its maximum position let's say this is that maximum position okay and this is the ground so we know the initial velocity in the y direction is v naught sine of theta okay so we're going to calculate this in the y direction so I, sh I should really be looking at these equations and figure out which equation among these three I can use um, clearly this one is really useful because I need time um, I, all, I have v naught y that's the initial velocity in y direction and if you think about it we also have v y we have v y that is the final velocity in the y direction and it is going to be zero because the motion in y is just this projectile going up and then coming down so as it goes up and if i'm talking about the time that it that, that is required by the projectile to go up in the y direction at the very last instant of that time the final velocity is zero because it comes to rest momentarily and then it comes down okay so v naught y minus g let's call this t is equals to is equal to v y okay so v y is zero because it comes to rest momentarily v naught y is v naught sine 45 minus g is 9.81 times time so if you solve this equation let's say we add 9.81 time times t both sides and we divide both sides by 9.81 so you'll end up with t equals v naught sine 45 divided by g and this is this is equal to 10 times sine 45 divided by 9.81 so if you use your calculator you'll find that this time is equal to 0 0.72 seconds now remember this is the time for the ball to reach to the highest point okay realistically this is the time that the ball will require to reach right here that's the highest point but we are solving we have already broken down this problem into two dimensions two different dimensions two independent dimensions x and y so that is the same amount of time that the ball will require in the y to travel to the maximum height but if we need the total time of flight that is from here to here we really need the time from here and then the time it requires to come back to the ground right so we need to um, uh, double this amount and that is going to be twice of t and that is 1.44 seconds time of flight that is your answer part b is range okay so let me figure out part b range how far in x okay so range we're talking about this distance you know it f starts from here and lands here so this is the distance we want so it's a distance in x so i really should be looking at the x equations and among these three this one is what we will use to figure out delta x okay so delta x is equal to v naught x times t remember this t is the total time of flight okay don't get it confused with this small t all right this t is the total time of flight and that is going to be 10 v naught x is 10 cosine 45 times the time of flight that is 1.44 and that gives you 10.18 meters that is delta x
question C, part C of this question is what will be the maximum height of the ball? So this is the height we want. Um, if I if I can draw this, um, this is the height we want. You know that is the maximum height, and that is the height, or that is the distance that it travels in the y direction. Okay, I hope you are able to see all this. This height is same as this height that it travels in the y direction, and this is all the same height that uh, the ball. So, so this is what what will happen initially in the y direction. It has v naught sine theta velocity. As it goes down, because there's an acceleration due to gravity that's pulling the ball down, it's going to slow down and down, and eventually it's going to stop. And that is the maximum height in y. So that is the height that we want. So let me just use the equation in y. So equations in y uh, is this. So among these three, definitely I can use this one. Delta y v naught t minus half g t square. Okay, so I'm going to use that one. Delta y equals v naught y t v naught y t minus half g t squared. Now beware, we're looking for the maximum height, right? And then maximum height happens during during the time that is half of the time of the flight. Okay, so the time of flight is the time required by the projectile to to do this whole journey in red that I'm showing right now. But half of it, that means when the projectile is right here, is the time required by this projectile to get to the maximum height. Okay, so we have to be very very careful about that. So here I'm going to use v not y as 10 sine 45 time not uh, not 1.44 but 0 0.72 this is going to be 0 0.72 seconds and those are the only things that I need so if I plug in v not y as 10 sine 45 minus half 9.81 we always know that and there's a factor of t here that is 0 0.72 minus 0 0.72 squared and then you should get the answer to be 2.53 meters so that's the answer